seriously, uh, welcome. This is going to be my farewell uh, tour, um, which is quite emotional uh, when I think about it. Um, I feel quite humbled that you guys have actually come here uh, to see me say Jiri Bai. Um, but uh, as some of you know, I won't be staying that far away uh, from the story. Uh, it's actually going to be just up the road, literally just up the road. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, I open my bedroom curtains, I can actually see uh, uh, the still, uh, which would be quite nice. Quite nice to see it, and uh, I won't miss the spreadsheets and that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, HC stuff, which I'm really bad at. Um, I always get a slap on the wrist at the end of each month because I haven't done something uh, for me which is um, unimportant. Um, I think the important thing is to make first class whiskey and I think that's something that I hope I've done uh, over the years. Uh, my predecessors certainly have and I have utmost confidence in David uh, continuing uh, that process. Okay, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and my career. Uh, which I don't like to do that much, as I've said to some of you already, it's a very Scottish thing, and particularly a Highland thing, it's not to blow your own trumpet, because uh, we don't feel very comfortable uh, doing that. Um, but I actually started uh, my career in whisky by chance. Uh, I went to college in Edinburgh many months ago, 83. I think it was. Uh, it was just to do uh, media studies and publicity studies, and I absolutely hated the course. Um, I loved being a student. If it was a BA honours in being a student and partying, I was that man. I had the mortar board and the scroll um, for that. Um, but I really missed the Highlands, and I thought, okay, I'm going to take, you know, take that magical year out and go find myself and all that nonsense. Um, so I moved back up um, to Inverness. I, I worked in a gen site for hours, I worked in a supermarket. Um, I cut trees for a bit. Um, and then I found out there was a job going at uh, Glenmorangie Distillery. And I, I knew the manager there uh, for a long time when I was growing up, uh, a gentleman called Ian McGregor. He'd been there for like 43 years and Ian was an uh, absolute gentleman, you know, I absolutely mean that. If anybody have seen Dad's Army and um, Captain Mannering, Ian was a clone of Captain Mannering. Mm -hmm. Just instead of like, uh, battle fatigues, he had a tweed suit. Um, so I thought, I'm not going to send Ian a CV, I was going to go round to his door um, and actually speak to the man. And so I did. I wrote to Mr. Roberts. Hi Ian, hi John, how are you? Here's a job coming. He says, yes there is. And he come. And he went into Ian's kitchen. It was always a kitchen there with Ian. Uh, never the sitting room, you know, that was for the minister or, you know, or something like that. He you know, likes me, it was a kitchen. And the first thing Ian did there was pull a cork of old Glenmore uh, tenure and he poured me a dram, poured himself a dram. He said, do you want water in that? I said, well, just a little Ian. He said, okay, you can start on Monday. <laughs> that was my interview uh, <laughs> to go into the whiskey business. And I thought, well, this thing, you know, it's warehousing, you know, filling cats and doing this and doing that and you know, tapping and, you know, that's another story, which I've told earlier on today. Um, I thought, okay, I'll do this for a little while and then I might go back to studies and stuff like that. Uh, but it wasn't long, I thought, this is, I really like this. 
you know, I like the smells and I like people as well. And I thought, okay, well, I'll do this. So I was aware of this and then I went in the mill room. And then, you know, unfortunately for some people, you know, they passed on. Uh, it was to my benefit to then become a mashman and a stillman. I managed to bluff myself, bluff my way into the office uh, to become assistant manager. I did that for six years. Uh, but then I got a, a call uh, from Derek Sinclair, uh, my predecessor, um, who told me kind of, kind of cheekily before it was advertised um, that he was going to be stepping up to be general manager and that his role would then become vacant. Um, so I thought, okay, this is good. So I said, okay, I'll throw my hat in the ring uh, for that. And what I did at Glenmorangie, I would finish my job there, you know, finish my work. You know, with the next permission, I'd come out here and then spend, you know, five, six hours in the evening just to learn, you know, every you know, gravity, flow rate, strength, you know, history of the place. And I had it nailed. I spent ages here. Well, when I came to the interview, it was um, Derek, Mark Leonard, the former um, operations director, and somebody from HC, I can never remember her name, uh, come back to me. And they asked me questions like, oh, you know, married, got kids, you play golf, stuff like that. And I prepared for this interview like an exam. I had everything in there. And they're asking me just these like, you know, menial questions. I thought, somebody else has got this post and they're just going through the motions now. Um, so I tried to be as upbeat and positive uh, as I could. I actually drove back to team actually quite disappointed. And it wasn't until the next day that Derek sent me a text, said, check your email. So I thought, well, okay. So I made my excuses, went home, checked my email, and it was an offer from Derek. He said, should you wish to accept, please contact me on the director. So I was like, no, first of all. And I've called Derek and says, yeah, I'm your man. I was so excited uh, about it. I was surprised you never heard me from wherever you live. Uh, screams of joy uh, that I got the job. So I went down and told my then boss, uh, Graham Munson, who's now at uh, Tomatin um, Distillers. I said, OK, Graham, I'll give you three weeks' notice uh, from now. And then I thought to myself, wait a minute, I haven't read the rest of the email. I, I would honestly had no idea what I was going to get paid in salary, uh, where I was going to live, what the pension was, what the perks were, and I was just like, you know, I want this uh, so badly. Uh, but it's easy to understand why, you know, when you come to this distillery, um, you know, it is beautiful. The location is absolutely fabulous, and the people that I have here, which uh, David will uh, soon inherit, uh, are first class, top class. Uh, and that's something I don't think gets um, recognised enough. You know, it's always, in the past, it's always been my face, you know, John is Val Flair. Uh, that's certainly not the case, uh, because I have six operators here um, who have a combined experience of over 200 years uh, between them, and without whose help, uh, I think I would have struggled um, uh, quite badly. So great credit uh, to the people that work here. And that's something uh, I'm sure David recognises as well. You know, without the people, you don't get great whiskey. And you know, I'm going to skip on here. Just, I'm supposed to have a script here tonight, but I'm going to totally ruin it and just you know, wing it as I always do. You liked it from the start, John. I know, I know, I always do. You never opened the email. You know we can tell, right? <laughs> it's, 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 it's in one of these pockets uh, somewhere. But uh, yeah, 
people are everything. And you know, I was asked to say you know one three things that you've learned, um, you know, in my time at Balfour. I don't think it's things that I've learned. I think it's things that I've always had in mind. Um, and I think you know to get good work done, you don't need to be hard nosed. You know, be good about it. Be nice about it. It's easy uh, to be like that. And I've found in my time, if you're like that with folk, you treat them well, and they'll treat you well. And that's something I feel, yeah, privileged uh, to have happen to me.